Oh my gosh, surprise, surprise, we're in Start the Party this week! Woo! All right, so we're not actually having a party right now, but you guys have to wait for it because at the end of the summer, we're having a big party to start the school year, so it's gonna be exciting. So obviously, we're in this series called Start the Party. We've been in it all summer long and a little bit into the end of the school year, and I'm really excited because we've been talking about the promise that Jesus made about get us getting the most out of life. And so just a reminder, as we're talking about a party, we're really not talking about the physical kind of party, not like the one we're gonna have at the end of the summer. We're talking about any effort to celebrate, serve, or enjoy being with others in a way that adds value to life. And so when we talk about party starters, which is the series is all about with us being party starters, that is being someone who makes a space for that, for a, a party to happen in any way possible, right? So that's what we've been talking about this summer. And so tonight, we're really gonna talk about a specific way that we can each be party starters in our own way. So let me tell you about a funny story of one time that I really needed help. Um, so. If you don't know, in college, a lot of the times in dorm rooms, you have um, rooms to where you have multiple people in there. So my freshman year, I had a roommate. There was two of us in a room. And then there was two suites next to each other that shared a bathroom. So oftentimes, your bathroom is not directly connected to your room. You have to like go out into the hallway to go to your bathroom. Funny thing is, there is this one time that I quickly was like going to take a shower and I was in my bathrobe and I was like, you know, running in and I was taking a shower. And then I get out of the shower and realize that not only did I forget my change of clothes, but I also forgot my key to my room. And so I was in my bathrobe and I had to call um, security to come and let me back into my room. And it was a really embarrassing moment. So. Word to the wise, when you get into college, make sure you always bring your key and a change of clothes when you're going to take a shower. That's all I have to say. <sighs> yeah, it's fun. It's fun being in college. There's a lot of ex learning of experiences and stuff, but we all need a little help time to time, right? Everybody does. If you couldn't even, if you couldn't think of a situation maybe of a time that you needed help out, I'm sure that there's something that there's been a point that happen, has happened in your life that you have needed to ask for help or you've needed help getting out of a situation or something like that. And so I think also when we're looking around in the world and we're seeing everything um, that is happening around us, it really shows us that we really do need a lot of help, right? Now there might be the silly little moments like when you forget your um, keys and your change of clothes and you have to ask a random um, security guard to come and let you in your room, but there's the more serious stuff that we're dealing with in the world, like bullying, like dealing with depression and anxiety, um, dealing with a lot of hate speech and injustice and racism and poverty and hunger and war. And I think the list can go on and on. I think you guys could each think of something that's going on in the world that adds to it, right? And it feels like everywhere we look, somebody is struggling and somebody needs help. And I think that all of those needs and all of those hurts in the world can be extremely overwhelming, especially to people like us, right? Because we're not super powerful political leaders. We're not anybody that is just, we're the Joe Schmo that's off the side of the road that like, we're not gonna end world hunger, right? And so with also with so much access to what's happening, not just in our own world, but to the world around us, it's easy to feel really worn out with the pain around us and to feel kind of helpless. Maybe you see it all and you're really just not sure where to even start. You don't even know how to help with a situation. Maybe you've um, made an effort into doing something, but then you quickly did away with it because you weren't really seeing any results to helping the situation. Maybe you chose to move on and hope that somebody else would help it up. I don't have the tools to do it, so maybe somebody next to me will do it. Or maybe you just look around and you have so many feelings and so many worries about the about what's happening in the world that you just can't even handle it because if you think about it too much, it's gonna just overwhelm you too much. And it can be super challenging for all of us because us as party starters, um, we're called to not just live in a life, a full life that Jesus promised us, but we're also called to help others do the same thing, right? And so the, really the question is, is what we're gonna be talking about tonight is with so many hurts of happening in the world, can we, as just one person, really make a difference um, big enough to make a change? 
right? I think that's a big question. And so tonight in this, in the um, scripture that we're going to be talking about, oftentimes, um, in his life on earth, Jesus often taught people what it looks like to like practically be a party starter. He gave them actual tools of what um, a party starter can do. And so like we saw a couple weeks ago, um, he used parables or stories to make sure that the people listening really understood what he was saying. So he would teach someone and he would go into a parable about it that related to what they would know in their own society so that it would make sense to them. It's like us using, an, it's like me using a modern day example to help you guys understand something. And so tonight we're going to dive into one of those parables that can really help us understand how we can step in and offer help when there's a need. And so in the passage that we're looking at tonight, Jesus is asked by a religious, a religious leader at the time, what was going to take for, um, to t what was it going to take for us to follow him and to have the full life that God really promised? And so they were prob they were um, really asking, okay, what is the most important thing that we need to know? And so here's the thing. These religious leaders were not buddy-buddy with Jesus. Oftentimes what we saw in the Bible is that these religious leaders knew almost everything about all of the rules and all of the regulations in the Bible inside and out. So all of the laws that we see in the Old Testament, all of the social laws that they would have in society, they knew it inside and out. And they didn't like Jesus because he was teaching things that were radically different than what they were teaching. And they were the ones that wanted to have the power and they were the ones that were in charge. So what we see here is an example of them asking Jesus a question in effort to try to trip him up, right? So that's what they're doing. And so the interesting thing is that Jesus doesn't answer them directly when they ask that question. He answers them with another question. So he answers their question with a question. And this is what we're going to be looking at tonight. So it says here, Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? So he's asking, what does the law say? How do you read it? And the man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul. We could go to the next one. All of your strength and all of your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. So pretty easy, right? You'd think that it was just love God, love yourself, love your neighbor. It's something that we often talk about and I often um, quote in the scripture all the time. So it's a pretty similar thing. And now the question really is, is this religious leader was sitting there thinking, who exactly is my neighbor? And so he asked Jesus that. And so to answer, Jesus goes into this parable that we might be familiar with. And it starts like this. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits, and they stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. Pretty terrible, right? So there's this Jewish man, Jewish man, that is important to know, that is basically robbed and attacked and is left for dead on the side of the road. So everything was taken from him. He didn't have any prospects. He didn't have a way to help himself. And all he needed was somebody to stop and help him. And you'd think that the first person that would come upon him would help him, right? Because it's a person literally dying on the side of the road. But as we see in the parable, it doesn't. So the story goes on to say that the first person to walk by him is a Jewish priest. He saw this wounded traveler and he averted his eyes and he kept on walking. That is like a man on the side of the road nowadays and a pastor just walks by somebody that is literally hurt. You could tell that something's wrong with him and he just walks by and pretends that he doesn't see him. And then another man walks by, a Levite, which is a well-known spiritual leader in the community. So someone of great importance in the community came by this guy next and he just kept on walking too. And then this happens next. So it says, then a despised Samaritan. So we're going to explain what a Samaritan is in just, in just a second. But you could already tell, despised. That is a pretty, like, bad word of describing somebody. That's a pretty, like, negative connotation. So a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. And so here's the thing, friends. 
In modern times, most of us understand the phrase Good Samaritan. We've heard of that phrase before, and we know that it's associated with a person who does something good in society out of the goodness of their hearts, right? So it's somebody that helps out someone else, a radical kindness, things like that. But back then, a Samaritan, there were certain people in the Jewish history, in the realm of um, Israel, so like within the region of Israel that the Jewish people were, there were a certain sector of this religion that all of the Jewish people despised. They did not like them. These Samaritans were seen as less than. Oftentimes you would hear sometimes in the slang, they were seen as half-breeds, which is a pretty terrible thing to say of another human being, right? They were disliked, they were overlooked, they were left out of groups at the time, and especially by the religious leaders that Jesus was talking to, the ones that asked this original question. And so it is a radical statement that Jesus was telling this story and he says, it wasn't a Jewish priest that came, it wasn't a well-respected member of the Jewish church at that time. It was somebody that was despised by everybody else in society that saw this man and had compassion. And so the Samaritan and didn't just see this Jewish man on the side of the road and keep on walking. The Samaritan didn't choose to do nothing because of the differences between their two groups, because this Samaritan man had every right to see that Jewish man and to not want to help, right? Because of the way that he's been treated by people like him. We know that from society, from today, right? And instead, the Samaritan felt compassion for that man, and that compassion led him to act. And so Jesus says that the Samaritan in this story took care of the Jew Jewish man's wounds, he transported him to an inn so where he could rest and recover. And then he paid for every single thing this Jewish man needed while he was there. Now that is a radical act of kindness. But here's the thing, this Samaritan didn't do it because he had to. He didn't have to help this Jewish man. He didn't do it because he wanted to hold it over this Jewish man's head like oftentimes we do it for people that we don't like not to make himself look better, and not because it would stop this from ever happening again. Guys, the Samaritan helped this man because he was loving his neighbor as himself. He was treating this person as he would treat himself, as he would want to be treated. And you see, when the, this religious leader asked Jesus who his neighbor was, he was probably thinking these things. He was probably thinking, who am I obligated to help? Ever asked that question? What is the bare minimum that I have to do? Who is the obligated person that I have to help? Is it just the people that I'm close to, that I like? The people who are the same as me? Maybe look the same, like the same things as me, do the same things that I do? Is it the people that I think deserve it? Do I have the right to say who deserves to be helped and who doesn't? But with this story, Jesus answers, it's pretty simple. Everybody is our neighbor. Everybody deserves to have that help, right? When we love Jesus and we follow him, we have the responsibility to start the party by simply loving everyone in this world as our neighbor. And guys, we get to be party starters for everybody. That means the people who are unlike us, that don't look like us, who don't like the same things as us, who don't run in the same circles as us. We are party starters who likes everyone, even the people we dislike, even the people we despise, who are annoying, maybe do dumb things, even the people who maybe don't like us. They're still our neighbor, and we're still called to love them as we love ourselves. And even the people maybe we'd rather ignore, who are weird, we don't really connect too well. Those are the people that we love as well. Because the bottom line for tonight is that a party starter uses what they have for the good of others, right? And now does that mean that we have to help every single person in the world? That you have to support every cause, respond to every single hurt that you see, and show up at every single time that there is a need? No, the, the answer is no, we do not have to do that. We can't, it's not possible. We have our own needs and we have our own limits of what we can and can't do, right? The thing is, as a party starter, you can choose to do what you can, 
what you're able to do to help your neighbor in need. And so friends, the important thing to remember, it really isn't about what we do. It's about choosing to see the need and being moved by compassion to meet that. It's about letting God's spirit lead you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so the good news is that each of us has what it takes to do this, right? And so here's a couple of things that we can start to do as we learn how to love our neighbors as we self, as ourselves and be party starters. So the first thing here is we can ask the question, who is my neighbor? So in other words, who are the people that you encounter on a regular basis? Um, in your home, in your neighborhood, in your school, on your social media feed, because you can even be neighbors to people that you follow on Instagram that you might not know in real life, right? We have Instagram friends that we like following. The second question is what do they need? So where are they hurting, where are they struggling, or just in need of a little bit of help or encouragement? And then the third question is what do I have? So what resources, influence, relationships, or talents do you have that you can leverage as you doing good for other people? So like we said, the needs around us can be really overwhelming. It can feel like sometimes we don't have the capacity to do it. And we aren't made to meet all of the needs that we see on our own. And so let's start by asking, who's your neighbor? What do they need? And what can I do? And then it's time to simply start the party. Start doing those things, taking one step at a time. And so as we head to small groups, I want to, you guys to think about this question. What is one need that I see around me right now? And how can I start fixing or helping with that need? Let's pray together. God, I think it is the hardest thing to recognize that um, everybody is our neighbor because there's probably a lot of people in this world that has a lot of divides. There's people that aren't like us, that believe different things, that think different things, that maybe we don't like or they don't like us. And there's a lot of barriers sometimes to feeling like we want to help those people. And so God, I ask that you help remind us every single day that every person is our neighbor and is deserving of our help no matter what. There's no if, buts, and ands about it. And so God, I ask that you help us start seeing where the needs are, start recognizing exactly who our neighbors are, and start seeing what talents and what things lie in us that we can do to help our neighbors that are in need. So in your name we pray, amen.